About six months ago, Samsung launched the A53, a follow-up to the popular and affordable A52. While a competent and well-organized channel would jump on the topic while it was fresh, our executive producer was too busy sipping Mai Tais on the sandy beach to make that happen. Or at least that's what I'm assuming happened. Anyway, the summer's over and it's better late than never, so let's dive in and see what makes this phone so popular. But before we get started, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and then comment subscribed so I can give you a personal shout out in a future video. I want to shout out Azauri and Arthur Cass. Thanks for subscribing. It's technophiles like you that make this all worthwhile. Hello, technophiles. Welcome to Tenzi's Tech. I'm Scott Leffler, and this is our list of the 10 things you need to know about the Galaxy A53 before buying. Number 10. Price and Availability The Samsung Galaxy A53 5G starts at just $450 for the base model. Unlike the Galaxy A73, which is only available in a few markets, the A53 is getting a wide release across the globe. So, no matter whether you're in Albania to Zimbabwe, you can get your hands on the A53. At $450, the A53 5G is extremely competitively priced. It's a full $350 less than a base S22 and $100 less than even the S20 FE that's a full year older. Really, the biggest competition comes from the Pixel 6a, which we talked about in a previous video, and the slightly older Galaxy A52s 5G with a starting price of around $300 and a full-spec model available for around $400. So with so much competition, is the A53 worth it? Number 9. Design and Build Not much seems to have changed between the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G and the Galaxy A52 from 2021. There's four colors to choose from, blue, black, peach, and white. The phone's polycarbonate backside also makes it scratch resistant and prevents fingerprints from adhering to it. The A53 is a 6.5-inch phone, the same as the A52s and the S20 FE models. It's slightly larger than the S22 and the Google Pixel 6a, which have screens of 6.4 inches and 6.1 inches, respectively. Due to its flat corners, the phone is comfortable in the hand. The phone's only 189 grams, which feels just right and isn't too heavy or light. The well-balanced body allows for the use of the phone with just one hand. Overall, there's nothing too surprising or disappointing here. Number 8. Cameras Similar to its predecessor, the A53's back features a quad camera setup, a 64-megapixel primary camera, a 12-megapixel ultra-wide lens, a 5-megapixel macro sensor, and a 5-megapixel depth sensor. For the front camera, you get a 32-megapixel selfie camera. However, these are the same as the cameras that are available on the A52s. This isn't a bad thing per se, the image quality is very good, not spectacular like you'd expect from a flagship, but good enough for all but the most serious of content creators. The quality is roughly on par with the Pixel 6a. Some users will prefer the Pixel, others the Galaxy, and in the end it'll be mostly about personal preference. So while we have no complaints about the A53's cameras, there's also nothing here that makes it stand out from its closest competition. Number 7. Battery and Charging The A53 packs a massive 5,000 mAh battery that will last most users a full day or more of use. In consumer drain testing, the A53 lasts about 7.5 hours of constant intensive use, which arguably gives it the best battery life in this price range. This is one area where the A53 really steps up over the slightly older A52s. The A52s only has a 4,500 mAh battery, and the battery life is roughly an hour less. Neither the A53 nor the A52s have wireless charging, which is disappointing but typical for Samsung's A-series. Both phones offer 25-watt fast charging capability, which, while not the fastest, is still quite good. However, the A52s comes with a 15-watt charger in the box, whereas the A53 does not come with any charger, unless you're in Brazil. Then the A53 does come with a 15-watt charger. But for the rest of the world, you'll have to buy your own. Number 6. Display Samsung phones are known for having some of the best displays, and the Galaxy A53 5G is no exception. But like the cameras, the A53 and A52s share the same display. A 6.5-inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display is available on the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. 
The display has a peak brightness of 800 nits, making it easy to see even while sipping a mojito on the beach. The video playback is buttery smooth and has excellent contrast levels. The lack of an adaptive refresh rate is the only drawback we can find with it. You have the option to select between 120Hz and 60Hz in the settings menu. Choose 120Hz for better performance and 60Hz for better battery life. Gorilla Glass 5 is used to shield the display, which, while not the best Gorilla Glass, is typical at this price point. There's no concerns while viewing the display at any angle, and the colors look excellent in both the natural and vivid modes. So again, while the display is very good, it's nothing that stands out compared to the less expensive A52S. Number 5. Software and UI One of the main factors contributing to the popularity of Samsung smartphones is their single user interface. Samsung's Galaxy A53 5G is powered by One UI 4.1, an Android 12-based operating system. The most feature-rich third-party skins available are, without a doubt, those like One UI 4.1. One of our favorite features of One UI 4 is the color palettes. The color scheme of your wallpaper can now be coordinated with the icons, text, and other elements on your screen thanks to this new functionality. One UI has a lot going for it, but what really jumps out is the fact that it'll continue to receive significant Android updates for the next four years. The bulk of Android flagships are shorter than this. Unfortunately, this phone has a lot of bloatware pre-installed, including a lot of Samsung-developed apps, some Microsoft-developed apps, and other apps created by third parties. Thankfully, most of them are easy to get rid of. Number 4. Performance the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G comes with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. It's also available with up to 8GB of RAM and 256GB of internal storage, but only the base model is available in the US. However, if extra storage is what you need, you don't have to worry, as the A53 has expandable memory of up to a terabyte. Additionally, the phone also features virtual RAM, which can give an extra 6 gigs of RAM or up to 8 gigs with the upgraded models. This allows the phone to operate smoothly for all your day-to-day -day needs. As for the processors, Samsung went with its own Exynos 1280 chip compared to the Snapdragon 778G chip in the A52S. This is a downgrade. Benchmarks show that the Snapdragon chip outperforms the Exynos chip in every way except efficiency, and even then the difference isn't very significant. Additionally, mobile games are more often optimized for Snapdragon chips than Exynos. The performance isn't terrible with the Exynos chip, and the casual phone users won't have any complaints, it could just be better. And while the decision to go with the Exynos chip may have a lot of advantages for Samsung as a corporation, in the long run it still means that today consumers get an inferior product. Here the A52S gets the win. Number 3. Connectivity Another area in which the A53 and A52S differ is in their wireless connectivity standards. The A53 features Bluetooth 5.1 and Wi-Fi 5, whereas the A52S features Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 6. Typically, people don't pay much attention to the differences in these standards, but I'm going to try and simplify this for you. In the case of Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6 is a big upgrade for those who spend time in houses or offices with a lot of Wi-Fi enabled devices and a Wi-Fi 6 router. If there's no Wi-Fi 6 router at your home or office, it won't offer many advantages. As for Bluetooth, the differences between 5 to 5.1 aren't as noticeable, but 5.1 offers faster connection and syncing speeds. Between these two, we'd recommend going with the A52S with the Wi-Fi 6 since the difference between Wi-Fi 5 and 6 is greater than the differences in Bluetooth. Also, while your home or office may not have a Wi-Fi 6 router now, it's likely that the routers will get upgraded in the next four years and the Wi-Fi 6 offers better future-proofing. Number 2. Audio The Samsung Galaxy's A53 speakers provide an audio experience that's incredibly high quality for this price point. The speakers could become very loud and the audio is well-balanced. Unfortunately, like almost all modern phones, the A53 has no headphone jack, necessitating the use of USB-C earbuds or a reliable Bluetooth set. However, as previously mentioned, Samsung only included Bluetooth 5.1, which lacks the hi-fi audio of Bluetooth 5.2, so audiophiles will need to use USB-C headphones to fully appreciate their music. 
However, the A52S snags the win here yet again, because like a vestige from a time before the electric light bulb, the A52S features a 3.5mm headphone jack. Number 1. So, which one should you get? Both the A53 and A52S really are great phones. However, there's a catch. The A52S is not available in the US and does not share the same wide release that the A53 does. It's still possible to buy the phone in the US from websites like Amazon and eBay, but these won't have any warranty. Additionally, as of the making of this video, if you buy the A53 directly from Samsung's website, you also get a free pair of Galaxy Buds 2 valued at $150, plus one of the best trade-in programs for your old device. All of this really does make the A53 a pretty sweet deal. Note though that this promotion is for US customers, so check Samsung's website for your market to see what promos are available. But comparing just the devices with each other, the only real advantage the A53 has over the A52S is the battery life. If you can forgo a little extra juice, getting the better performance and headphone jack found in the A52S may be your best choice. So what do you guys think? Do you think the A53 is worth buying? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video, you'd also like these other videos. And if you've already seen them, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss our future tech videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.